On the guitar, learning to play all of the chords can seem overwhelming, especially if you're looking at a book like this that has dozens of pages, hundreds and hundreds of diagrams, how could it not be complicated? The truth is, actually learning chords on the guitar is not that complex despite the way it looks, because really, when you get down to it, chords are all built on consistent and predictable patterns that we're gonna look at in this video to see how you can really distill chords down to four essential triads, four essential harmonies that explain more than you would think, more than most people really know about chords. So by the end of this video, the feeling of overwhelm is gonna be gone and you'll know how chords really work. Okay, so to start, the key to understanding is that all chords, all four of these essential chords, are built using what are called tertian intervals, which just means that you basically build them by combining intervals of major thirds and minor thirds. As a quick overview of what that means, what these intervals are, looking at the 12 notes of the chromatic scale and using alternating shapes like this, squares and circles, every whole step in this pattern is separated by notes of the same shape. So starting on C, for example, rising a whole step from C, is the D note, and then a whole step above D is E, and then a whole step from E is F sharp, then G sharp, A sharp, and then back to C. All of these notes spaced a whole step apart are squares. Or looking at the other set of whole steps, all of the circles, starting on C sharp, for example, a whole step away from that is D sharp, and then F, G, A, B, and back to C sharp. So when I say that chords are built from tertian intervals or intervals of major thirds and minor thirds, in this pattern, in the chromatic scale, a major third separates any notes that are two whole steps apart, moving in a clockwise direction. So looking at C, for example, the note two whole steps above C is E. So E is the interval of a major third above C. And a minor third is an interval of a whole step and a half step, or one and a half steps. So looking at C again as the starting point, the minor third, moving in a clockwise direction, is E flat in this case. It's one and a half steps above C. And using these two types of tertian intervals, tertian just means three, either a major third, like these four triangles of major third intervals, or a minor third, like these three squares of minor thirds. Using these two types of intervals, we can create a variety of chords. For example, take the major chord, like the simple C major, and we play it by combining three notes, C, E, and G. This chord chart here shows how to actually play the chord on the fretboard. So the numbers represent the different fingers you use to actually play the chord, while the intervals in this diagram show the underlying theory, the actual structure of this chord within what's called pitch space. It's more of a theoretical view. It shows the underlying music theory of this pattern. And you can see how this major chord includes a major third interval from C to E and a minor third interval from E to G. And together, notes C, E, and G sound nice as a C major chord. Also known as the C major triad, triad just means it has three notes, so it's a tertian triad, a three note chord made from intervals of major thirds and or minor thirds. In music theory, the number three is really important, as you can see in the term tertian triad. All right, so that's the first of the four chords. It's really not complicated. It's the major triad built from tertian intervals. And the other ones that we're gonna look at are also built using tertian intervals like this C minor chord built using the interval of a minor third first from C to E flat, and then a major third from E flat to G. And combined these notes, C, E flat, and G form a C minor chord, which has a different sound. Compared to the major chord, which has more of a bright or strong sound to it, the minor chord is relatively weak or pensive. But both chords, major and minor, are built from tertian intervals, where again, the major chord is a major third followed by a minor third, and the minor chord just swaps that pattern with a minor third followed by a major third, which you can see clearly in this diagram here within pitch space that explains why you're playing certain notes on the guitar fretboard as illustrated over here. Both of these chords, or triads, are composed of tertian intervals, though each one sounds unique based on the arrangement of those intervals. And because these two types of chords sound so good, a lot of music is written using just these chords, major and minor. But since there are four basic types of triads, we're only halfway there. So moving on to the next one, you can also play what's called a diminished triad by removing the interval of a major third and instead combining two minor thirds like this, which sounds even weaker or more diminished than the minor which is why it's called the diminished chord, formed by two intervals of a minor third. 
in this example, from C to E flat, and then from E flat to G flat. This is the diminished triad and the third one that we're looking at. And then as a fourth option, we can also remove the minor third interval altogether and play two major thirds that together make what's called an augmented chord, which sounds sort of like the major chord, but augmented. It's a little more intense. So in this example, it includes notes C, E, and G sharp, all separated by intervals of a major third. So these are the four basic types of triads. Augmented, built from two major thirds. Major, built from a major third and a minor third. Minor, formed from a minor third and a major third. And then the diminished chord, made from a combination of two minor third intervals. Now there's a couple of reasons why learning these basic triads is important. The first one is because each one has its own unique sound. So you use these chords like a painter's palette to create cool sonic pictures, which we'll look at more here in a moment. Another reason it's important to learn these four basic triads is because once you understand that they're just tertian triads built from major thirds and minor thirds, you start to understand how all of the chords in a book like this are built because they're built using the same formula of tertian intervals. So seventh chords, ninth chords, all of the extended chords are just adding more and more major and minor third intervals to create more complex sounding chords, but it's the same formula at its root. All chords are basically founded on these four basic types of triads, major, minor, diminished, and augmented. And what's awesome is that even though we've been using C as the example, where these four chords are played using the C note as the root, you can play all four of these triads in every key because the same interval patterns of major thirds and minor thirds are used, where each of the 12 notes in music can be the root note of a chord. So just like that, our four essential chord types turn into 48 unique chords because four chord types times 12 keys equals 48 chords. 12 major, 12 minor, 12 diminished, and 12 augmented. Where these 36 chords in particular make up the most commonly used harmonies in music and the various modes that most songwriters use, as I explain in other videos, where the major chords in this diagram form a ring at the center, and around that are the minor chords, where each is aligned with its relative major, and then around that is a ring of diminished chords, where each is aligned with its respective tonic of a key. Though augmented chords are also used in a lot of songs, like those based on the harmonic minor scale, so we can also add those here to form a ring around the perimeter as well. Again, these are just the four types of each chord, major, minor, diminished, and augmented, but aligned into groupings like this based on the chords that go together in a given key. And once you know these four chord types, major, minor, diminished, and augmented, and how they're arranged in the circle of fifths into different groupings that explain how to move between chords in a given key or mode to form pleasing progressions, you really understand most of the chords you need to know in music, which are really simple. They're based on tertian triads. In another video, I explain how to build extended chords, the logic of adding further major or minor third intervals, tertian intervals to build extended chords. But really, these four basic chord types are much of what you need to know to create cool music. So hopefully this was helpful. Please let the algorithm know if you liked it. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.